Welcome everyone. Uh, oh, that's cool. Welcome everyone to the live. Oh, okay, it's giving me all these updates. Cool, no worries. Awesome. Okay. One more. All right. First, I'll pray. Feel just thank you for us being here today. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, learn your word more and. Um, educate ourselves and get closer to you Lord Jesus and I just want to thank everyone that's going to participate and watch this session whether it be now live or later on um, when it's available on Instagram and YouTube and just hope that it blesses them in Jesus name amen all right welcome everyone first we're going to start with the song and I feel like during these trying times at the moment um, especially now that um, if you follow the ACL, the Australian Christian Lobby on Facebook or anything, um, I forget his name now. How bad is that? Anyway, uh, they informed us uh, that the conversion law um, is now um, nationwide. So there's a lot of um, things in there that we cannot do. Um, for example, we can't pray for someone... Um, if they do not wish to be same-sex attracted um, and we even if the person is whatever sexuality they are we can't even um, uh, encourage them or advise them to live a celibate life which is um, really sad I feel and there's a lot of gonna obviously there's gonna be a lot of ministers out there and a lot of uh, Christian leaders that are gonna be I feel like they're gonna be hunted down <laughs> Uh, which I guess is exciting and scary at the same time. They're going to be hunted down, I feel, and cornered. Um, and they're going to be either fined or put in jail for their for their so-called crimes. And they, this law now can go into the past and actually um, someone can try and prove that this person did um, said and did things um, that were just harmful to a degree. Um, and that minister will be uh, guilty until proven innocent and they're the only ones that actually can um, be prove themselves their innocence um, no one else can uh, try and prove their innocence for them so or you know even if they have um, evidence it's the person that's been convicted that has to um, do their own research sort of thing and try and try and um, prove their innocence if that makes sense uh, so there's a lot of trying times, especially for um, us Christians, uh, with what we believe um, and what we stand for. So this song, I feel, is um, quite, um, what's the word, um, convenient, probably the better word for it, or fitting <laughs> for the situation. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, again, if you don't like my singing, feel free to turn it down and move on. <laughs> um, enjoy. Oh, and we're also doing Proverbs um, 11 tonight.
Awesome. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Moving on. All right. Uh, welcome everyone again for joining me. Thank you for joining me. We are going to do Proverbs 11. All right, so last week's chapter was just a bit more encouragement to, um, if you're lazy, don't be lazy. <laughs> just saw that verse. Um, yeah, just encouragement again. So we'll, go, we'll go straight into number 11, which is only 31 verses. Very easy, very short. Um, starting in verse 1. The Lord detests the use of dishonest scales, but he delights in accurate weights. Pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. Riches won't help on the day of judgment, but right living can save you from death. Um, the godly are directed by honesty, the wicked fall beneath their load of sin. The godliness of good people rescues them, the ambition of treacherous people traps them. So um, obviously these verses here, the first six verses are relating to uh, honesty um, and dishonesty. And really it's basically saying... Try your best to be honest. And that sort of reminds me of, I think it's rule six or seven or eight. <laughs> Can't remember. Maybe rule four. Um, of the 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. And he says, um, tell the truth. Tell the truth, or at least don't lie. Um, because the moment that you lie, obviously, you've got to tell another lie to back up that lie. And if you... Continue to tell so many lies, and eventually you're called out, or you know, caught out on it. Your reputation, obviously, is um, going to be very uh, poor, so to speak, not very great. So it's always best to tell the truth as much as you can, as best you can, um, with every aspect of your life, as much as you can, or at least don't lie. <laughs> Uh, number verse 7. When the wicked die, their hopes die with them, for they rely on their own feeble strength. The godly are rescued from trouble, and it falls on the wicked instead. Um, with their words, the godless destroy their friends, but knowledge would rescue the righteous. The whole city celebrates when the godly succeed. They shout, shout for joy when the wicked die. Upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper, but the talk of the wicked tears it apart. It is foolish to belittle one's neighbour. A sensible person keeps quiet. Interesting. A sensible person keeps quiet. Um, I, I think these verses are quite self-explanatory, aren't they? <laughs> um, continuing on, verse 13. A gossip goes around telling secrets. But those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. That's pretty self-explanatory too. As we all know in life, people like to talk about other people, especially if um, they themselves um, have once been ridiculed or shamed um, for being different or being um, or behaving differently, or you know, and usually as a result, because they know they've been gossiped about behind their back to make themselves feel good, they'll go ahead and gossip about, gossip about other people um, to esteem themselves to be, oh, I'm not like that person, <laughs> um, which is sad. It's, it's very, very sad. And we all do it. We all do it. It's not something that we, not one of us can say that we haven't done. Um, verse 14, without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. And I guess we can talk, we can uh, quote that or uh, apply that to almost every government, can't say every government, but almost every government or popular government or main government, leading governments, so to speak, um, Australia, America, uh, Russia, and now even uh, the Ukraine, there's things coming out now about Ukraine um, that they've been, um, haven't been completely honest at, honest um, or wise with their, with their actions. 
verse th uh, 15. There's danger in putting up security for a stranger's debt. It's safe enough to guarantee another person's debt. So again, uh, it's coming back to this one. This one's been mentioned probably about three or four times in the previous chapters or you know, three times in the previous chapters. Uh, so I would say that these chapters of this book of Proverbs, obviously they were written at different times and it's all, it's all come together as a compilation. So um, there's a, a, quite a bit of repetition, um, obviously expressed slightly differently. Uh, but yeah, that one's, that one's been popping up um, quite, quite often. A gracious woman gains respect, but ruthless men gain only wealth. Your kindness will reward, reward you, but your cruelty will destroy you. Evil people, evil people get rich for the moment, but the reward of the godly will last. And that's obviously talking about um, when we get to heaven. Um, evil people will only get a season of enjoy, enjoyment of their riches and their fame or their materialistic possessions. Um, it will only be for a moment, whereas the godly, um, it will last when we go reach heaven. Godly people find life, evil people find death. The Lord detests people with crooked hearts, but he delights in those with integrity. Evil people will surely be punished, but the children of God, of the godly, will go freely. I'm just curious if, because um, in the New Living Translation it uses the word evil, so I'm curious of what the word is in, um, in the King James Version. The wicked, okay, so it's wicked. They that are of, of a froward heart are abomination to the Lord. A froward heart. I wonder what froward means. I can't even. I was going to look for my phone to actually Google froward. <laughs> but I can use my tablet. Hang on. One second. I'm intrigued now. What froward means? Does it also mean wicked? Word definition. Welcome everyone, welcome. Oh, there you go. Difficult to deal with of a person. Difficult to deal with. So, a, where is it? A froward heart, a difficult, a difficult to handle of heart, or someone's heart. A person that's difficult to handle, really. Our abomination to the Lord. Interesting. Continue on verse 22. A beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like a gold ring in a pig's snout. Wow, that's a bit visual, isn't it? <laughs> and I would, I would assume, um, if it's using a pig's snout, that back in those days, um, coming from the Abraham lineage, um, which uh, the Muslims still don't eat um, of um, pigs because it's claimed to classify it as a dirty animal. Um, so this imagery of a gold ring in a pig snout would be like, um, uh, I mean, you can get the imagery yourself, but I'm trying to claim it to, uh, you know, today's sort of, um, imagery, but I can't even think of any of my own in my own culture. How bad is that? <laughs> um, 23. The godly can look forward to a reward, while the wicked can expect only judgment. 24. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. That's interesting. That's a bit of financial advice now, isn't it? And there's so many... Um, what's his name? Gary Vee says that all the time. He says, you know, give your stuff for free, um, you know, in your content. You know, give your advice for free and everything like that. Um, and the more you give it for free the more people will want more from you. So then they'll try and actually purchase your services. They'll purchase your products that will actually benefit them. And they want the whole package with them, not just get snippets and pieces of here and there um, on on your social media or your uh, YouTube and stuff like that. They actually want you to deal with their uh, situation um, firsthand. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. That's interesting. I wonder what 25, 25. Um, so in the King James Version, it says, And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Uh, sort of like a plant. When you're craving water and you give it to someone else, but you'll be also watered, you'll be refreshed. Interesting. People curse those who hoard their grain, but they bless 
the one who sells in time of need. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, if you search for good, you will find favor. But if you search for evil, it will find you. And I guess this one can be applied to um, work if you want to improve your skills. If you seek out mentorship from your boss or advice or ways that you can improve in your workplace, people will find favor in you. And there's so many times, even um, I guess you can apply this to any either work or any uh, club um, or, you know, church group or anything that's a club as a, a group of people. The ones that want to help out the most um, or and, and try and seek out um, some direction or guidance, um, they will find favor. They will be the ones that will be called upon because they're reliable. They're, 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 they're uh, consistent or earnest or intrigued or um, I'm trying to think of the right word where they're, they're really wanting to improve on themselves. Or they're really wanting to improve the situation. So they will be found favorable to be, to be asked um, to be a helping hand. But if you search for evil, it will find you. That's true also. If you go looking for... Uh, if you're looking for bad news, I think the saying is, I can't even think of the saying, if you're looking for trouble, <laughs> if you're looking for trouble, it will find you, you will find it for sure. <laughs> uh, verse 28, trust in your money and down you go, but the godly flourish like leaves in spring. Those who bring trouble on their families inherit the wind, the fool will be a servant to the wise. Those who bring trouble on their families inherit the wind. What's that mean? The fool will be a servant to the wise. That's interesting. I have to really research that one because that doesn't actually make sense to me. It might be because of a cultural, um, uh, cultural miscommunication or misunderstanding. Um, inherit the wind. Inherit the wind. Does that mean like a big gust of wind? That's interesting. Verse 30. The seeds of good deeds become a tree of life. A wise person wins friends. If the righteous are rewarded here on earth, what will happen to the wicked sinners? And that's how it ends. That's how that chapter ends. If the righteous are rewarded here on earth, what will happen to wicked sinners? Interesting that it leaves that question for you. So that's pretty straightforward um, kind of chapter. It's very self-explanatory with, it, with its imagery, with its uh, words. Um, you know, honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. Um, you know, pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. So these are the first two verses. Um, riches won't help on the day of judgment, but right living can save you from death. Um, even the one down here, it said about money. Trust in your money and down you go. But the godly flourish like leaves in the spring. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Quite, I can get it through the imagery as well that they do. And they do pretty good imagery. Like, if you've noticed, a lot of... Um, What's it called? Metaphors that they use or examples that they use is quite very, very visual to relate to the spiritual and the emotional or the mental. Um, they use very good imagery. It's sort of like mini stories in themselves. Um, you know, even just sharp, quick things. Without wise leadership, a nation falls. Self-explanatory, very, very, it's cut to the point, you know. If the leadership isn't wise, the nation's not going to survive. The nation will eventually collapse and fall and be vulnerable to attacks, vulnerable to, um, you know, collapsing on itself, actually, as well. Uh, vulnerable to invasions, etc. So, yes. Anyway, I could probably do chapter 12 too, but I'll leave that for next week. Just so this is some things that you can... Um, Mentally dwell on, or meant not dwell on, mentally uh, meditate on throughout the week. But yeah, go read it for yourself. And meditate, like I said, chewing on the cut, as they say, to um, 
to sink it into your heart, really attach it to your heart. Anyway, go to Adrian's, Adrian's, Adrian's Instagram number 11 this week. Question everything. It's not enough to know what you want in life. You must know why you want it. Um, and I've actually had this sort of, um, sort of same concept is, um, we, well, for me, for example, I want a closer relationship with Jesus. I want a closer relationship with, with God. I want to be able to, um, know and hear his voice quite well, um, so that I don't have to feel like I'm, uh, second guessing, I guess, if what I'm doing and what, if my decisions are the right decisions or the wrong decisions. Um, so when I, and it's especially with the belief of Christianity, because there's so many people that are like, oh, you know, Christianity is just a made up story. It's a fairy tale. Um, and same with obviously the other, other religions and I'm going to go, so then I've gone, okay, I need to research on my faith and my religion and obviously the Bible to really understand why I believe in it, why it makes sense to me. Um, and that's what I've done. And even hearing, um, Jordan Peterson's, um, explanations of, um, like it with his book, with the maps of meaning, um, and even with his, um, educated knowledge on obviously the Bible, because that's what he's researched on. It makes sense to me why I believe it even more because to me, the human condition is a reflection of, in the sense, the spiritual, um, because they were the, the two sort of, um, worlds or the two dimensions run parallel to each other. We affect the spiritual realm and that spiritual realm also affects the, um, the physical world. And it's all connected through story or all, all connected through, um, intentions and the invisible things, for example, um, uh, uh, hidden agendas, um, you know, intentions, um, and you can see that through emotional manipulation, how people use their words and stuff. And to me, it's like, this is not just a physical world. This is an emotional, mental, and a spiritual world. Um, and how we all connect and how we all, um, just flow with each other. And to me, it's just a, a it brings confirmation to me that there is a God, that this, this world is more than just the physical essence. Um, you know, us humans are the, we seek meaning, we, we thrive off the concept of meaning in our lives. And, um, if evolution, uh, was the true fact, which it's only, it's still a theory. Most people go, no, it's facts. It's like, they've got evidence. They have evidence to point towards it, but they weren't actually there to actually prove that it actually happened. Uh, so that's, they don't have video footage. <laughs> um, and they say, you know, um, we came from nothing, nothing comes from nothing, but yet we still seek out meaning. We still seek out this, this concept of searching for more than just uh, existing. And that to me is a confirmation or a revelation to me that uh, there is a God, there is a spiritual realm, there is a, a greater uh, being that is um, looking over us and wanting us to live a, 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 um, a, a holy, righteous life um, with as minimal suffering as we can or as, as possible and just focus on Him and He will um, provide us life in the end. Um, so back to this. So I thought we were on a long tangent there, didn't I? <laughs> so I did question everything. I've questioned uh, why does why does you know God work this way? Why does God work that way? Why did He work this way in that person's life but not that way in that person's life? Why did He save this person but not that person? You know, and it, it comes to even just the Book of Job and how God says, "Do you know? Did you create the world? Did you create everything that's in the world? Do you know when the sun, um, you know?" rises and, and sets sort of thing. Like, do you know how it's all balanced and everything? Like, who are you to question 
uh, me. And it's just like, well, that's exactly right. Who, who am or not question, but who, who am I to, um, to demand answers or to demand to know? Um, that would make me feel like as if I'm important enough to be God, to play God, to then tell God <laughs> where he's going wrong in this whole world and whole situation. Well, really, that's not the case at all. I do not have that and will never have that um, ability to be God or um, to even think like God because I'm only uh, comprehending from my limited, very limited mind. Um, and I actually just read... Um, or listen to, I should say, um, neuroscience, neuroscience book. Let me just get it because I need to get these books actually right in their library. Um, no, I don't, I don't want to, I want to, my library, my finished books. Um, where is it? Oh, there you go. The Big Questions of Neuroscience by Susanna Herculiano. I hope that's said the right. Herculiano Huzel. And she says that we actually have 16 billion neurons. That's more than any other species on this planet. Uh, I think the next one is like 10 billion. I can't even remember what animal it is. Dogs and cat. I, they, the dogs, I think, have 4 billion um, neurons. And she's relating to... I have to really listen to it all again to actually understand everything because it even, and it was my first one, not my first introduction to neuroscience, but um, I was intently listening to this. I really wanted to know or really understand neuroscience. And she does mention everything about how, you know, our world has evolved and how we've evolved and, um, you know, for 6 billion years or 3 million years, I don't even know. They keep changing it. (laughs) Each scientist says something different. And she says, she came, across, came along this concept of, um, you know, and she sort of brought on the idea that, you know, dogs do have feelings, emotions, and the concept of self-consciousness or um, interoception. Interoception is when you can feel your heart, um, you know something's not right in your body, you feel butterflies in your stomach, you're aware of what's happening in your body, you're aware of the sensations and what's going on like right now i'm feeling a bit flustered in my in my face because it actually is quite um hot in here because i've got the door closed etc um um with each of my breath i take in the i realize the saliva in my throat is sort of going to make me cough or whatever or you know make me stuff up on my my words etc i'm paying attention to um giving awareness and that's to interoception interoception is when you're paying attention and you're, you're feeling your body and dogs do feel that because when they need to go toilet they will let you know. So they obviously do have some sense of consciousness. And she's like, maybe we have a higher conscious and a questioning conscious or, you know, whatever, because we have 16 billion neurons. And then she said, wouldn't it be interesting if, you know, millions of years time, uh, uh, another being with more neurons will then look at us and go, look at us like we're a dog. because of how limited our neurons are and they've got like 20 billion or 25 billion and they're like, wow, the humans were so, um, so unaware, so not as self-conscious as we are. And that makes me think and go like, we are so, and in a sense, it sort of backs up the statement that we have, we, from our comprehension as humans, don't really know the full story, the full, the full understanding, the full, full spectrum. So, um, Again, I don't know why I went on that tangent, but back to questioning everything. I had, like I said, I like to question things and I want to, I want to understand. I want to know. Um, and I can, and, and people are like, well, now that you know, you should, you know, agree with it. And I'm going, well, no, because the science changes. Um, and I don't have to fully believe, uh, something that only one person believes or, you know, the mass, mass number of people believe. Um, cause where, where is the underdog scientists, um, uh, that do eventually come to light and they and then everyone's like, Oh, they were right all along. And she's like, yes, they were, but you condemn them. You, you, and she did actually mention a few scientists in the past that, um, that happened too. So, um, obviously the science does change. Opinions do change. Agendas do change. 
So, and I, every answer that I get, I do like to um, challenge it as much as I can with things. Or even if I don't challenge it, then if something else challenges it, then I go, okay, let's go back to that question and really assess um, what my foundations of belief. Even with this whole um, mental growth, personal growth, personal development, and everyone's going on the lines of, you know, trust yourself or love yourself. Um, and I used to once believe that, you know, yes, love yourself, um, you know, go do what your heart desires, um, and all this blah, blah, blah. But now growing into myself and, uh, seeing other, even evidence from science coming out that people who, uh, delay their gratification actually get a much bigger reward in the end. Um, and I just saw one actually, I did save the post on Instagram about, and I think it was, um, Adrian that shared it, Adrian Domenico that shared it, uh, that pornographic, uh, porn actually, um, because it, because you don't delay gratification, you're actually destroying a lot of things, expectations, standards, mental, um, emotions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and even in your relationship, it, it, um, what's the word? It starts to falter. It does, it starts to, to waver and there's, there's disconnection within the relationship. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of now, um, personal growth and personal development going in the lines of no deny yourself deny that that sense to fulfill your current desires because there's a much greater reward in the end if you um, deny yourself of luxuries of today and put in the hard work you will um, reap much greater rewards in the later in life and that's been biblical since day dot <laughs> but no there's a lot of agendas now going around saying you know fall in Follow your desires, follow your, your passions and your dreams, um, you know, do what you want to do, but it's just like, well, and you know, everyone does do that. And I even did, went to that to a stage and then it's just like, but this isn't giving me gratification as much as I want it to. And it's, it's not really helping me. I don't feel good until I started going, all right, I focused on my, myself for a time. Let's now focus on how my impact or my life is impacting those around me as well. And what are their needs? Can I make this whole situation much better for all of us rather than just getting the best out of it for myself? And it's this whole concept of community. How can we prosper as a community rather than prosper for myself? Because that's not going to benefit anyone but myself. But in the end, it doesn't benefit myself at all because I'm feeling lonely and um, not belonging in a group because I'm isolating myself from that group, etc. Anyway, that was a big tangent. Hopefully you enjoyed that. <laughs> So question everything. It's not enough to know what you want in life. You must know why you want it. So go do your research. Go dig in. Um, why do you want the things that you want? Why do you desire uh, the things that you desire? Is it out of uh, you're following the crew or you're following the, the people of what they're doing? Or are you? is it actually instilled in you that that's what you feel like you need to do? Um, something that you feel needs to be done within our community and within our society, so to speak. So with that, I'll leave it here. Thank you so much for listening. Sorry, that just went on a bit of a tangent halfway, uh, second half of this Bible study when it's supposed to be Proverbs 11 and, um, well, seek wisdom, seek wisdom. Why do you want wisdom? Seek it out, research on it. It will tell you why you need it. She will tell you why you need it. Um, no worries, Leanne. Thank you for so much for listening. <laughs> anyway, have a good night and I will see you all next week, 8pm for Proverbs 12. See you later and king up. <laughs>